Hey guys, Jason here, Jason310. Sorry I haven't made any videos in a while. Have been flying uh, the autopilot on the 310 has crapped out my 40 something year old elderly Navimatic 400A. So it's hard for me to make videos, uh, especially when I'm flying by myself because I'm hand flying right now. The good news is I've got some quotes through from an avionics shop to upgrade the autopilot, I'm going to install an S-Tech 3100, bring the airplane into the 21st century. So anyway, I, I was going back through some of the data I have on my 310, and I thought I would do a video called Time in Your Tanks, talking about how I've calculated accurately what the endurance is on my airplane. So I know exactly how long with either my tip tanks only topped off or all four of my tanks the tip tanks and the wing tanks topped off, how long I can fly uh, and land safely and still have a reserve, so the endurance and time. Okay, so I'm gonna present this to you in the form of a presentation. Enjoy. So first, let me briefly mention why I'm doing this. Aircraft fuel gauges are notoriously inaccurate. They can be float gauges that bounce around in turbulence. They can be capacitance gauges, which can be subject to you know, resistance in the wiring and inaccurate indications. So for me personally, I wanted to do this so I could have numbers in my head for various fuel loading scenarios of how long I could fly and safely land with a, a reserve. So the endurance of the airplane, I know I can go X number of hours with these fuel tanks filled up and land and safely have a reserve. So here's the process. Fly various cross-country trips at consistent altitudes and power settings. And for me, I like to get above the heat, like to get above the traffic. So I'm always flying around 10 to 12,000 feet, normally aspirated. So I'm only pulling about 55% power. So I've got very consistent fuel burns. The trips should be a mix of short, medium, and long durations. So you need uh, good data points from various um, trip durations. I'll explain more about that when we look at the cross plot in a minute. You need to start your trips topped off, completely full of fuel. The reason is, number four, after landing, you need to top off the tanks completely and record the fuel that you've on onboarded because the fuel that you onboarded is the same as the fuel you used. Of course, then you need to record the total flight time. Either block time will work, that includes taxi, or just the time in the air. Either will work as long as you're consistent. And you need to cross plot these data. So number six, you wanna cross plot the fuel you use versus your flight time or your block time. And then we'll use Microsoft Excel or some similar software to fit, to graph that data and fit a line, uh, best fit line to determine the endurance. And I'll, again, I'll show you that here shortly. So here's the data for my airplane. I have three columns. Column on the left is block time, including taxi. The fuel used for that flight, so from my fuel receipt after topping off at the FBO. And then the calculated fuel use in gallons per hour. So that's the middle column divided by the block time. At the bottom, you can see my average fuel burn, block fuel burn is 21.7 gallons per hour. That may seem pretty low for you for a twin engine airplane for a Cessna 310, but believe it or not, as I mentioned, I fly really high. I'm only pulling about 10, 11 gallons per hour at cruise. I'm burning more fuel during the climb, but I'm also including taxi fuel here because it's block time. So it all kind of averages out to kind of even out what the, the cruise fuel burn is. So in other words, the climb, extra climb fuel is kind of being offset by the fuel I guess I'm using during taxi. So here's the cross plot. The y-axis on the left is the fuel in gallons. The x-axis on the bottom is the endurance in hours. The green points are the data, so that's from the column that I showed you, the columns that I showed you on the previous slide. 
And then the black line is a line of regression or also called a line of best fit. If you look where the black line, the line of best fit, intercepts 140 gallons, which is my total fuel with all my tanks topped off, that's the tip tanks and the wing tanks, and then you draw a line down to the x-axis, you can see I have about 6.4 hours of fuel until fuel exhaustion, until my engines quit. If you look at with just the tip tanks, which are 50 gallons each, which equals a total of 100 gallons, and do the same thing, draw a red line down to the x-axis, you can see I have roughly about 4.6 hours of fuel till my engines quit, till fuel exhaustion. So a bit later, I'll show you what I've done is I've just backed off an hour. That's my personal minimum. So subtract an hour from those figures and that gives me my safe endurance till I'd like to be on the ground. So the conclusions for my airplane at my preferred altitude and power settings, again, I fly high, I fly about 55% power consistently. That's the key, the C word, consistent. For full fuel, I have an endurance of, and I'm just kind of copping out here and saying a little over five hours plus a one hour reserve. For the, just the tip tanks, I have an endurance of about three and a half hours plus a one hour reserve. So that's the point of this video. These are the numbers that I keep in my head for those two fueling scenarios, and I want to be on the ground at that point. And these are only applicable if, if I fly above 10,000 feet and at 55% power. So if for some reason I have to fly low, then I'm not going to push my fuel anyway. I need to, I need to look at uh, my charts and determine my endurance for those scenarios. But this is 99% of my flying is above 10,000 feet, long distance, 55% power. Some caveats, you need to be consistent with your power settings and your altitudes and the way you record your data. I would argue you need at least kind of 10 to 15 data points for this to be statistically valid. You'll need some flights of longer duration to establish a trend. So if you look here, if I only did lots of short flights and the data points were what I circled in red, that might affect my line of best fit. It might skew it left or right, and then I'd get an inaccurate result. So you need kind of short, medium, and a few longer term duration flights to establish a, a correct trend. You need a good R squared value. What is R squared value? That's the goodness of fit. So R squared value of one means that your line of regression, your line of best fit, fits the data almost perfectly. In other words, the data are very certain. They, they establish a, a really good trend. If your R square is really low, it means you've got like a shotgun blast on your, on your chart and nothing correlates very well. I mean, that's kind of the simplest non-mathematical way I can establish it. So you can see for my data, I have an R square of 0.999, which is really good. So I have high confidence in my data. If you want any more information on that, I just suggest you Google that on, uh, on the internet. I'm using block time, including taxis, just how I initially started recording this data. If I could go back, I'd do just flight time. If you're going to use just flight time, you need to add some taxi fuel in. And also just for me, I'm flying a twin. It has a combustion cabin heater in the nose that uses Avgas. And if I'm running that, if it's cold outside, it, side, it uses an extra half a gallon per hour. So we need to allow for that if we're using the heater. So I hope you got something out of that. Remember, it's up to you to determine the fuel endurance for your own airplane. And of course, your airplane flight manual, POH, trumps anything that I tell you. But, uh, you know, for me personally, this was a great way to really understand how truly far and long I could go in my airplane. Take care. More videos soon.